I'd like to tell Jean that I've seen her um, perform several times and that I really enjoy her music. And besides owning almost every album she has, I'm also part of a reenactment group that does 18th century um, reenactments. And when she was mentioning about the bagpipes being outdoor music, oh, don't I know. (laughs) (laughs) Um, What I'd like to comment on was in your um, performances, when you do um, do the live shows, you do something that is not so much on your albums, and that is almost all the time you have at least one or maybe two secular type of songs as opposed to just um, more folk type songs. And I was wondering if you would ever consider... um, I realize that when you want the audience to sing along with you, you get your largest response out of... um, Oh, Amazing Grace, or not even Amazing Grace, but um, other, you know, Mm -hmm. secular Mm -hmm. songs. Do you ever think that maybe that could be offending some of the audience who are not of the religious persuasion? Um, No, it never occurs to me that anybody would be offended, basically because no offense is intended. And I think the only way you can operate in this world is if you're out to stand on somebody's toes, then there has to be malice aforethought. Oh, I, if, I, yeah. If I didn't have if I didn't have irreverence or offence in mind, then there is nothing I can do about somebody else's tendency to read it in. I, you, know, I, you could you could finish up speechless if you if you carried that particular mental attitude to its ultimate conclusion. Um, do you, do you, um, do you think that you could get that same type of response? You know the. Um, I, I think what you're looking for in doing these kind of things is to get everybody in the audience involved, you know, and let's be honest, those kind of songs a lot of the people either know or they feel comfortable with, and they do sing w- along real well. Do you think that if you would incorporate maybe one or two of the kind of traditional old Scottish songs in your repertoire that you could get that same response? No, is the short answer to that. You really don't? No, I, if, if I understand you, you're suggesting that uh, A, my main aim is to sing, I call them God songs, and uh-huh. uh, I, you know, I realize that that makes some people bridal too, but as far as I'm concerned, that's as, uh, as descriptive a generic term covering every conceivable kind of religious persuasion as anything else. Um, there's a there's a very real reason for my using those because it touches something a great deal deeper in most people than I could hope to do by singing what is essentially foreign language material. Yes, I can teach a Scottish song. Yes, I can teach a chorus. But as we were talking about here a couple of minutes ago, an American audience's reaction to a Scottish song is going to be um, not too subtly different from a Scottish audience. You don't bring the same lifetime of emotional connotation to it. And unless you are absolutely militant atheist, then you do bring some kind of personal association to a God song. Whatever your persuasion, whatever your background, whatever your belief, you do have some kind of association. And um, I'm not saying that the association isn't there. I'm just thinking that um, for perhaps a Jew or for um, a Muslim um, who is interested in other music and w- would feel maybe left out is more the term I should use while you're doing a song of that nature. Um, I would hate to think so, but by the same token, the, um, the you know, there isn't a sermon involved. I'm not proselytizing. <laughs> it's, I uh, know, but you are getting an extremely round response to a um, a song that would, you know, mention Jesus or have reference, therefore. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm wondering if you don't do a song like, um, oh, a, a Scottish type of melody that, say, everybody would know, such as um, Scotland the Brave or Bonnie... Um, oh, I've uh, got an excellent yeah. answer for you there. What? A, I love Amazing Grace. 
I think it's a wonderful song. B, I love, I will guide thee. C, I love, give me just a little more time. And D, I hate Scotland the Brave. There's absolutely no excuse for me to sing a song I can't stand. Oh, no, I, I can understand. Well, most of, most of the popular ones, unfortunately, have been done to death. And I also think most of the very well-known Scottish songs subscribe to an image of Scotland that I won't touch with a barge pole. <laughs> well, I think we have an insoluble here, actually. I, uh, I understand I've had a couple of people in the past, and I mean literally a couple who have been outraged by my singing of um, a Moody and Sankey hymn or a black or white Baptist song. Mm -hmm. uh, I can only repeat again that if I am singing it from a view of you know, what I regard as um, an honest presentation in, a, in an attempt to communicate with the largest possible number of people in the hall. That's all I can ever do. I can never hope to reach everybody in the hall in exactly the same way. I understand. I do want to leave you off with the feeling that I do love your music and I think you have a lovely voice and I really appreciate, how do I say, appreciate the albums and I've been able to receive. Well,